Hello everyone. The other day I had someone request that I cover the admin LTE library. If you're not familiar, this is a front end specific uh, library that uses Bootstrap and Font Awesome, I believe, to make a uh, admin panel interface with a bunch of components that you can pull out of the library itself. So this isn't going to be similar to like, you know, Avo or Avo, I guess it's Avo. Uh, and, uh, you know, other Rails specific admin panels simply because those uh, include the back end functionality. So, this is something that you're more likely to use to style your application, assuming you're using like Bootstrap, uh, because it's, uh, it just has those front end components for you, and then you'd have to hook it up yourself. Uh, but there's a lot of neat stuff here that you can use, even just for inspiration if you're setting up an admin panel for something. Uh, there's some pretty cool uh, features that you can use. So I thought we'd go ahead and set this up. I'll show you some of the roadblocks because it does use like Bootstrap 4 uh, and some of the documentation that I found online was a little bit dated. So some things have changed, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to get started. I'll go ahead and stop the server. I'm going to CD out of this directory. I'm going to run a Rails new and let me hit F11 here uh, and I'm going to call this video. I'm going to pass in a dash J of ES build and a dash C of Bootstrap. And then we can CD into the video and we can run a code dot to get started. So the basic idea for this is you're just going to run your like yarn add command. You're going to have to import it uh, if that's the way you want to go. Uh, or I haven't really covered this a lot before. What you can do is just download the source code, put it into like a uh, vendor directory. And from in there, you can just include that. So that's what I'm going to be covering today. There is uh, yarn commands if you want to go that route. I just thought, you know, I haven't really covered this before. I thought it might be a good time to just quickly touch on how to use like vendor for stuff like this. So to do that, we're going to get started by just doing a Rails G controller. I'm going to call this the dashboard controller and give it an index action. That's just going to be like our admin panel, for example. You can then like make another one for your home if you wanted to. So you could do like your pages home if you wanted that to be like your root, right? So we can come over to the config and the routes.rb. We can come into the pages, set this to be the root, save that. That gives us a uh, quick little root to work with. I'm going to come into the gem file real quick and do the usual foreman stuff. So I'm going to say gem foreman, and I'm going to do this for GitHub colon. I'm going to go ahead and save that again. If you're not using Ruby 3.2, you don't need to do this step. It's just because it does, it's not supported by Foreman yet. Uh, I have to do this every time. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We can close out of our routes, close out of that. Now what I want to do is uh, you should be able to find a releases page. You can click right here. It'll take you over to uh, this link right here. I'll have all these links in the video description. Uh, so we'll come into the releases. We'll find the current release, scroll down to the bottom and uh, you'll see the source code. You can then copy this and you can uh, like, you know, download this somehow. You can use like a wget command or something. Uh, and then that's going to give you a zip file. Oops, sorry. Uh, and then in that zip file, you're then going to, uh, or to that zip file, you're then going to like extract it. And uh, you're then going to copy that into your, um, into your vendor folder. But first we have to make the vendor folder. So we're just going to go ahead and do that real quick. So what we're going to do is over here, you'll see we have the, or I think we have the vendor folder by default, uh, but we don't have anything inside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a make dir inside of our video and then inside of vendor. So in, just inside of our project right here, we're just going to make a folder and I'm going to call this the uh, assets folder. So now we have an assets folder in here. You could also right click if you want to. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, uh, this link right here. We can just copy it. And then we're going to type wget space and then we're, oops, and I messed it up. We're going to type wget space and then we're going to uh, get the uh, zip address right here. So that should work. And now if I type ll, I hopefully have that one right here. I do. Uh, it does have a one after it. So that's going to be a bit of an issue, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and move this to v3.2.0.zip, uh, point one to v3.2.0.zip. point two point zero point zip just so that we have that that folder with that name. That looks good. Okay, so now what we're going to do with that 3.2 is we're just going to run unzip on that folder. That should uh, unzip it into its own directory. Now we can type ll, and we should have a, uh, a admin uh, v, 
uh, or a admin LTE 3.2 right here. Now what we can do with this is we can uh, move this. So we can say MV uh, admin, and then we can move this to our video project, which is what I called it, slash vendor slash assets. And what we wanna do here is we move it to uh, this directory slash admin LTE, just so it's a bit easier to work with. So we'll do that. We can come over here to our vendor, our assets, and we should now have a admin LTE in there. So we can CD back into our video. And inside of our video, we can now do a LL on uh, vendor slash assets. You'll see we have that folder right there. So now this is in here. Uh, the other thing we now have to do is we have to tell Rails, hey, I've got this thing in my folder. Uh, it's in a, a vendor assets folder. Uh, I want you to use that. And to do that, we can come over to our config and our initializers and our assets.rb. I'm just gonna go ahead and full screen this real quick. Uh, and then in here, all we really have to do is we have to say, look, you have all of these root joins right here. I'm gonna put this on a new line uh, because this is just appending it to, to the list. Uh, and then I'm gonna say, I also want you to add a vendor comma asset. So that's going to add that entire vendor assets directory for us. And now that will be included in our assets path. Uh, the other thing we have to do, uh, maybe it depends, uh, is you can add this to like your pre-compilation list if you're so inclined. Uh, again, similar command, you just do a plus equals, and then in here you're gonna add the admin LTE dist uh, CSS and the dist JS. So this isn't totally optional, it's just if you wanna pre-compile your assets. Uh, and then once we have that done, we should now be good to do a bin slash dev. Go ahead and start the server, hopefully. Over to localhost port 3000. And then you'll see this is our pages home. I'm then going to go to slash dashboard slash index. So this is now our index page. And what we can do now is inside of our app, our layouts and our application.html.erb file, we can add some quick little, uh, little boilerplate. So here it's really going to depend on what you would like to do here. If you're interested in like using one of the templates, this is where you're gonna deviate a little bit. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use like a starter page, I guess. So we can come into our, uh, where is it? Our vendor, our assets. And then in here, you'll see that you have all of these pages right here with a bunch of examples. If you're so inclined for like login, pricing, profile, et cetera. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna skip those and I'm just gonna come down here to the starter because it's like the easiest thing to work with, right? Uh, in here, we have a nav bar. We have the main sidebar content. We have a content wrapper for the main page content. Uh, and then we're a content wrapper for the page content. And then we have a content wrapper for the main content. And again, it's ultimately going to depend on what you'd like to do here. Uh, you can just piece these apart if you'd like to, to figure out which components you would like. I'm going to cover uh, extracting some of these in a second here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the application or the views, the application at uh, And this might look a little bit different than what you have, but that's okay. Uh, and I'm just going to replace the contents of the body here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. It's a lot, but bear with me. It's uh, it's just gonna be our wrappers here with a couple of render calls instead of those um, instead of those uh, complete components in here. So we're now gonna have to add these partials in. Uh, and the rest of this is, is pretty self-explanatory. It's just some bootstrap styling. So if we save this, we come over here. If we now refresh, we're gonna get an error, of course, because we're missing those templates, right? So let's come over to our views. And what we wanna do is our partial has a base with a header. We're gonna right click and we're gonna say new file, uh, or sorry, new folder. Right click on views, new folder, call this base. And uh, before I forget, I just want to cite my sources so that you don't think I'm making this up. Uh, this is based on some of the instructions I found for this Rails 6 tutorial. Uh, it just covers how to integrate it with Rails 6. Now, of course, some of the stuff has changed, uh, but the overall uh, s you know, instructions for setting up some of the, the bootstrap stuff is still the same. So I just want to make sure that this gets credit. I'll have a link to this uh, blog post in the video description if you'd like to follow along if you're using like uh, Rails 6. But we're going to come into our views and our base. We're going to right-click, new file. And in here, we're going to call this the, I guess we have an underscore header, .html.erb. And then inside of this header, we want to grab what's in the header in our starter, which is actually the nav bar. So we can just grab this entire nav bar component, copy it, paste it in here, hit control S, and that's good to go. Next, we wanna do the, uh, we have like the sidebar con container, right? So we wanna right click on our folder, our base, new file. And in here, we want to say underscore sidebar.html.erb, paste it in, save that and then we can go ahead and we can move back over to our starter. 
Now we've got two out of four done. Uh, the only other things we have here are gonna be our main footer. So we can go ahead and grab that. And let me grab the whole thing, main footer. And we can come up to our uh, our base again, right click new file, underscore footer.html.drb, paste this in. And now we're missing one other one, which I think is like the, uh, let me just check, the control sidebar, which is this one right here. So we can come back up to our views, our pages, or our base, uh, new file, underscore control, underscore sidebar, dot html, dot erb, paste this in, hit control s, and now we can close out of all of these four little components here, come over here and refresh the page. So now you can see we've got, well, we've got, we've got something, right? Uh, we're getting a bunch of errors here for some of the images that aren't loading correctly. And we're getting some issues with, uh, let me see, let me refresh. Looks like some of the bootstrap stuff also isn't working entirely. So we're gonna have to take a look at that. So what we're gonna do here uh, is we're gonna come up to our app assets, our style sheets and our application.bootstrap.scss. And this is where we have the issue. What we wanna do now is we want to import from inside of our vendor uh, we have our vendor, our assets, our uh, our admin LTE. In here, we have a dist folder. And inside of this dist folder, we have a CSS folder. And in that CSS folder, we have this admin.css. So we want to import that admin LTE slash dist slash CSS slash admin LTE dot CSS. And we can come over here and we can refresh. And now you can see we're already getting something that looks a little bit closer to what we were looking for. Now, we still have some issues here, of course. There's still some stuff that needs to be fixed. Uh, one of the things that we probably want to take a look at is um, how do we get this to look a little bit better? I'm gonna go ahead and stop the server and start the server again. I'm going to then hit Control Shift R to force a refresh, just to make sure that we're working with uh, whatever's up to date. Now we are getting an, an issue here with the web console not being defined. Uh, it's a little bit weird. Go ahead and refresh and we shouldn't get that again. Okay, so for these images, one thing you'll notice is uh, because we changed our asset path here, if I hover over one of these images, we should hopefully see that it has a source of slash dist slash uh, image slash admin LTE. So we do have to fix that. To fix that, we have to come into wherever this is being referenced. This looks like our, our sidebar maybe. We'll come into our sidebar, we'll hit F11, and we'll just do a control F for DIST. And basically what we have to do here is we have to uh, like prepend this dist with the rest of the path, which is slash assets slash admin LTE slash. You can alternatively just use like an image tag to grab it from the Rails asset path, uh, but this is just like a starter template. I'm not gonna go through here and refactor the whole starter template to be like Rails specific. I just wanna show you how to fix this and then you can like refactor it at that point if you want to. You'll see now we have the actual images appearing over here. It looks a bit more uh, like what you would expect, right? Uh, and I'm also at a weird media query breakpoint, but if I scroll out enough, we should hopefully see something that looks a bit more readable. Okay, so that takes care of those images. Uh, I think we should still have a couple if I refresh. Uh, yes, yeah, so we got a started Git for dashboard. This is happening, uh, I'm not entirely sure where. So what I'll do is I'll just come over here and I'll check in like this, this location. If I see it, I don't see a dist. The footer, I don't see a disk, which means it's probably in the header where we're running into an issue. It is. Hopefully I can just paste in that same slash asset slash whatever. So that's two of the three disks and here's the last one we can just paste it in. Go ahead and save that and refresh. And now hopefully when we refresh, we should just see the getting blah, blah, blah information. Okay, so that looks good. That looks like it's working. Uh, now the, the final thing we really wanna talk about here is we have these font awesome icons, but they're not loading in. Now you can do this to one of two ways. You can either use yarn or you can use like a CDN. I'm gonna try using a CDN for this. So we're just gonna come over here when you look for like the font, oops, font awesome CDN. And we can come over here and uh, we're not gonna grab this one. We're gonna come over to the CDN JS. We're gonna scroll down here. We're gonna click on the copy link tag. And then we'll come into our application, our app views layouts application.html.erb. We'll scroll up to the top. Let's we'll put this in right above our style sheets. Hit Control S to save that. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, we should see some icons, uh, which we do. The only other thing we have here are these badges, and these badges are going to be kind of cringe. And the reason for that is, if we come over to our header, what we can do is we can copy this. We can come over to ChatGPT, and then what we can do once we get to ChatGPT is we can just come over here, full screen this. We'll say, uh, I have this Bootstrap for uh, header that has broken badges. Can you show me how to fix the badges with, uh, or badges so they work? 
with bootstrap five, right? Question mark. And I'm going to paste in the whole thing and hopefully it'll tell me what you need to do. And uh, right here, it should be, uh, hopefully it doesn't just do the whole nav bar. It looks like it's going to do the whole nav bar. So I'm going to have to say continue from this last line. So I'm going to say continue from this line. The reason why I do that is sometimes it causes it to not completely break. Uh, unfortunately here it broke midline, so that's not gonna work. So what I'll have to do is come in here and copy this and I'm gonna paste this in. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to continue from here and copy everything else it said, which it looks like this is the rest of it. So I'm gonna come up to the rest or the, the last bit of the class, hit space, and then I'm gonna paste this in. And then control S and I'm gonna get rid of these back ticks right here because that's actually the uh, the uh, markup from uh, ChatGPT, it just broke itself. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna refresh. And now you should see we have the icons next to the logos, right? So, or next to the notification counter. So if you have like live notifications set up, now you'll have the icons next to it with the font awesome. So that's kind of how I refactor it. If I have like a Bootstrap 4 issue where I need to change it to Bootstrap 5, I just throw it into ChatGPT and like nine times out of 10, it just very quickly cleans it up for me without me having to think. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Uh, it's just. All right. Sorry about that. My whole uh, recording just crashed. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it. The only other thing you really have to do. I don't know if I said this is maybe set up uh, the JavaScript for this, uh, but that's pretty easy. You just uh, need to do your your import from your vendor assets. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. It looks like everything on my computer is updating. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now just so that this doesn't get completely corrupted. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.